Okay, good morning. Today uh, we will discuss the topic of domain analysis, which is an important process in software architecture design. So far we have considered modeling software architecture. Last uh, Monday we discussed architectural requirements analysis and this is actually one of the uh, subsequent processes. So we'll first look at the need. Why? What is this domain analysis? Why do we need it? What is a domain? Uh, then we will look at the uh, two sub-processes of domain analysis, which is scoping and modeling. So in the architectural requirements analysis, actually we developed several requirements artifacts. For example, textual requirements, state diagrams, scenarios, use case models, prototypes, etc. Okay. This is followed after the uh, identifying stakeholders, architectural stakeholders, defining their concerns, and after that process, we model that using these artifacts, requirements artifacts. So we try to express represent their concerns as best as possible. And actually the idea is then to, to follow with the architecture design, right? But it's not that easy, right? So we know actually the, the requirements, we know the wishes, but defining the architecture, going from requirements to architecture directly, it's not that easy. How can we derive the solution? Okay. How do we know? Actually, one of the problems of requirements is in general that they can be incomplete, ambiguous, imprecise, etc. So, and we have actually also discuss, this, uh, discussed approaches which actually try to actually uh, define the architecture almost directly from the requirements. So use case driven approach, artifact driven approach were some two of these examples. And actually we said that it's not a really an appropriate approach. Because we don't know what the we don't know whether how we can define uh, derive the architectural abstraction, the architectural elements, components, relations from these relations. Are these the right abstractions? So the bottom line is we don't know whether the uh, requirements are uh, well specified. So, okay. Okay. So this is the actually the, the case. So we we have requirements analysis. This is the really the first process that we should do because we have to identify the concerns, the uh, architectural drivers. Then, going directly, transitioning directly to software architecture design, that is designing the architecture, it's, it's very hard. Why? Because, so this is actually the problem perspective. Okay. What kind of wishes do we have? What is the problem that we want to solve? This is solution perspective. And actually there's a, a huge gap between the requirements and architecture design. It's not easy to, to directly identify just from the requirements, specification, use case, textual uh, specification, to drive an architecture, the gross level structure of the complete system. Actually, one of the uh, conclusions last week was, of last Monday, excuse me, that we need to identify the domain that we are considering. Okay? For each problem, so every requirement is actually focused on some domain. So to define the architecture, we said that we need to understand the domain. Okay? Because the domain actually will include the, the concepts. Actually, all, we will also see that the the architectural, uh, the, the concepts that we can map to the architectural elements. 
So first, after the requirements analysis, the, f the next step is actually to identify and understand the domain. What is a domain? This is a definition. It's an area of knowledge or activity characterized by a set of concepts and terminology understood by practitioners in that area. This is on definition from Butch et al. But so the idea is so we have a domain uh, includes a set of concepts that have been defined by experts in that from that domain and for which there's some consensus and which are understood by practitioners. Examples of domains. Driver monitoring. Okay, this was one one example or actually monitoring domain. Insurance systems. It's a domain. Okay. It's existing. There's a literature about it. There are well defined concepts. There are relations. Healthcare systems, domain, it's application domain, transaction systems, car dealer system, image processing domain, stock management, information retrieval, control systems, retail systems, production systems, etc. Okay. They are all domains. An area of knowledge which includes concepts. Concepts that are understood by, by practitioners in that domain. It's clear? Can you mention some other examples? Example domains? There are so hundreds, thousands of domains. One example domain. Speech processing. Right. Speech recognition. Speech processing. Example domain. Any management domain. Uh, management domain, but yeah, concrete. Information management. Information management is, is a domain. Example domain. <coughs> Graphical user interface domain. See, they are they are indeed examples of domains, solution domains, just area of knowledge. You can just find maybe books, textbooks about it. You can read it. You can understand what is an information management domain. Okay. There are different interpretations of domain in literature. And people also use these terms now, now and then. Problem domain, so which basically focus on client's perspective. So in the, in the literature states, we focus on problem domain. And usually they tend to, to interpret this as the, the client's perspective. The business domain, more from business perspective. Solution domain, solution perspective, that's what we actually will adopt, the concepts in the, in the domain. The general knowledge, so we study the, based on the domain, we, we, we do this and that. Okay? And they actually interpret this as the general knowledge of the architect or the engineer, or system product knowledge. So be aware, so, what, so you should actually know what kind of definition is adopted. In this course, actually, we go, go for this, the solution domain. It's the area of knowledge, which we can find in knowledge sources, which defines solution domain concepts. Okay? So... Last week we talked about, or last Monday we talked about, or we categorized the architecture design methods. 
one category was uh, requirements driven, the other was pattern driven, and the, the third one is actually domain driven. Uh, requirements driven, we said use case driven or art artifact driven. And the statement here, or the hypothesis here now is that a domain driven approach should be preferred. Okay. That is, before designing the architecture, you should understand the domain, understand the, identify the domains, extract the domain concepts, and use these concepts, domain concepts, for defining your architecture. So, what are the benefits of that? Why would, would we base our architecture on domain? domain concepts. Why? So you say that domain includes additional concepts which are not in the requirements. Okay. What else? Yeah, it's a point. Domain concepts is more stable and easier to understand and clear. It's All right. More, more less likely to change and other requirements. Very good. This is actually key. Domain concepts are stable. Okay. Actually, we want to have a, a, a stable architecture, robust architecture, right? Architecture is like, like should, should be like a house, we say, right? And if you look at the domain, if, we, if, if our architecture is based on the, on the architecture, on the domain concepts, and domain concepts are stable, then implicitly architecture will also be stable. So the domain includes reusable concepts which are stable, which do not change abruptly. Includes solution concepts, domain concepts, independent from requirements. This is actually also what you said somehow. It includes also some concepts which are not explicit in the requirements. It is just there, right? No matter if you want to build an insurance system or not, there is a domain of insurance systems. You can study it, analyze it, identify it, derive the concepts. And these insurance systems domain, if you take that example, it is just stable. For 20, 30, 40 years, is, they are talking about the same kind of concepts. If that's so, so we have some solid basis and it includes some solution for our architecture, then it makes sense to, to, to use that to drive, to base our architecture on domain. It provides a solid basis for architecture design. So domain includes proven concepts by a consensus of experts. It's not just an ad hoc specification. It has evolved, it, has got, it got mature. It doesn't change abruptly because it's actually the knowledge. It might change from now and then, so some concepts might be specialized, but it doesn't change every year, right? Like in the example of insurance systems, example of car, car construction. Car 50 years ago also had an engine and four wheels, right? And brakes, and now also. But some things, of, of course, changed. So many things specialized. So we have more special engines, 
right? But the, 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 the gross level structure didn't change. It actually provides the conceptual solution. So we say it provides a conceptual structure for the architecture. Okay. That will be the, actually the process that we will follow. Requirements. So if you map directly to architecture, you can see that you will miss a lot easily. Because the requirements usually do not explain, define these concepts. Okay. They just define the, the perspective, what the wishes, the stakeholder wishes. Drivers, I want this, that, that, and that. But how? The, the, the how is actually defined basically in the solution domain. So that brings us to the next question. Architecture design should be stable, robust, high quality. For that we need to understand domain, right? How do I understand domain? What's the process for that? That's the uh, domain analysis process. We have domain, okay, area of knowledge, includes stable concepts, understood by practitioners. And if you want to derive these concepts, what should we do? We should analyze the domain. So then we talk about domain analysis. Domain analysis, it's not an ad hoc approach. It's a systematic activity of collecting, organizing, and storing domain knowledge. Just a systematic process to understand the domain, to derive the concepts. Okay. There are actually, we can identify, distinguish two different types of definitions of domain analysis. One is from AI, artificial intelligence, the process of determining what knowledge is or should be known to a program and of capturing that knowledge in an explicit representation. Software engineering, a process by which information used in developing software systems is captured and organized for the purpose of making it reusable when creating new systems. So if we look at these two definitions, I, which also represent the, the, the focus, this is in AI domain analysis, domain modeling, is basically focused on a knowledge representation. It's, it's the domain modeling, domain analysis is the, is the goal by itself. Here, information used in developing software systems. For us, in software engineering, we identify these domain concepts not for knowledge representation only, but for actually using this knowledge to, to build software systems. See? So it's not the, 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 it's the, it's not the eventual goal. It's just intermediate process. So now we have actually two types of processes. Uh, requirements analysis, architectural requirements analysis, where we need to identify the architecture, the stakeholders, the, and the architectural drivers, and we have a solution domain perspective, which provides the the concepts. Together, actually, we will use these to to design the architecture. Okay. So that will be, uh, you will define the process later on. What is the domain analysis process? So we, we have given a definition, a systematic process for identifying concepts. But more concretely, we can identify actually five sub-processes. Domain characterization, which means that we need to identify the domain and the related knowledge sources which is called scoping. So we have some problem or requirements. And we, we in the domain characterization, we need to say, well, to, to solve this problem or to design the architecture for this system, we need these kind of domains. 
And in this domain, we need that kind of knowledge sources. Scoping. And the, 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 the four subsequent processes are data collection, you just elicit the knowledge, data analysis, you do commonality and variability analysis, classification, you define vocabulary, you define the abstraction classification, generalization, and you can have a data evaluation process for, where you evaluate the domain model. So if we abstract from this, actually we can say there are two key processes. One is characterizing the domain, identifying the domain, which is scoping, and the other is looking at this domain and extracting the knowledge to represent the concepts in a domain model, which we call domain modeling. Okay? So domain scoping defines the domain of interest with respect to stakeholders and the overall business context. And domain modeling provides a domain model by data collection, data analysis, classification, and evaluation. This is the process, domain analysis. The input is some domain knowledge. Output is domain model. What is monitoring, driver monitoring? We could say we need the driver monitoring knowledge. So we analyze the, the related domains and we get a monitoring domain model. Okay. So domain scoping, that's the first process, identifying the domains. You take the uh, the requirements, you, you take the stakeholder concerns into account, then you check, so identify. So it's a monitoring system, monitor to monitor car drives and car performance. You try to identify the important domains. Okay. Sometimes it's quite easy to identify domain, make an architecture for insurance systems. Yeah, it's insurance domain, right? Okay. Command control systems, command control domain. Okay. Sometimes you have to also search a bit. Okay. Um, for that, you can also use taxonomies to ease your job to support the domain scoping process, to the domain characterization process. There, you can look at taxonomies because. So we said there are different kinds of domains, and these domains are not just flat, so, but they are somehow also categorized in some taxonomies. Um, the domains of software engineering, from the very high level, consist of three categories. Computer science domains, mathematics domain, and application domain. This is actually the, also the, the basic categories of engineering in general. Domains of engineering, if you not with this, just engineering, what's that? So every engineering uses mathematics, focus on some application domain, and has some science. If we do software engineering or, or basic science, that we focus on is computer science. So what would be the domain of, for example, uh, chemical engineering, taxonomies? This would be the same, right? Application, lots of mathematics is used. What would be this in chemical engineering? Chemistry, etc., physics, civil engineering, What did we say? Civil engineering. Could be physics, etc. The buildings. So why taxonomy? Taxonomy structure or organized body of knowledge provide unifying constructs, may product, uh, predict future development areas, 
while you look at the taxonomies, you could say you could also identify neighboring domains, which can help you to build the systems. Uh, if you look at there are several taxonomies that we can uh, use. For example, ACM Computing Classification System. You can find it on this link. It's a document of about 80 pages. This is in case you are, you don't really know the domains. Okay. So it's, taxonomy can help you. We have also, there's also taxonomy of mathematical domains. So if your uh, application requires lots of mathematics, you might need to consider, look at the taxonomy. And finally, you could have also your own domain taxonomy. This is, for example, an application taxonomy from digital. So if you have your own company, you can do building the same kind of applications in the same kind of domains, you can structure these domains yourself. Okay. So domain characterization, actually we, ha we have to identify the domains, so requirements, we have to identify the domains. If we know, we, we specify, if we don't know, we can uh, use taxonomies, once we have defined the domains, listed the domains, we have also to, to look at the knowledge sources. Okay? In the end, we are interested in identifying the concepts. Knowledge sources are just concrete uh, sources of, of knowledge. Could be a domain expert, a human being. Okay? A person who has 20, 20 years of experience in designing insurance systems. It's a knowledge source, right? Another knowledge source, technical literature. Just the textbooks, the journals, design manuals. They, are, they just include the domain concepts that we might need. Or existing systems. Probably you are not the first who designs or develops the system or maybe you have also developed these kind of systems before, then, then it makes sense to look at these kind of knowledge sources. So domain literature, domain experts, and existing systems. This is the, uh, was the example on driver monitoring system. What we said, system is an onboard automated diagnostic system that will diagnose the driver and the car performance. So, the first thing what we should do here is to identify the domains, right? And then, so domain could be like monitoring, right? Control systems, and then we identify the knowledge sources. Knowledge sources, there's just a, 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 set, a set of knowledge sources, uh, uh, example knowledge sources, some textbooks, an expert, if you can find, and existing monitoring systems. Okay. So identify domain, identify knowledge sources, and extract these. Well, if you look at these three knowledge sources, so we are preparing the architecture design. We are not, we said, so architect should be stable, so we have to identify concepts. We are, so we identify domain, ident and we should look at knowledge sources. So there are three knowledge sources. If you look at these three knowledge sources, textbook, existing system, or expert, what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of these? For example, textbook. So we take a textbook on insurance systems. What's the advantage for for you? Or disadvantage? The information we need is all all the all the information is in textbook. Yeah. yeah. That's advantage. Mm -hmm. Is there a disadvantage? So it can include some stable concepts. 
can maybe provide the complete structure of insurance system. Maybe our uh, insurance system is changed over years and our textbook was uh, changed over years and Mm -hmm. It can be outdated or subjective, right? Or could provide just one view of some author. What about existing systems? Yes, maybe it's not exactly the same thing. So you could be biased also, right? What's the advantage? But we see the example solution. It's a concrete running system. It's a real example, right? Okay, third one, expert. It's a human being, person. Sorry? You can benefit from uh, his or her experience. What's this advantage? advantage. It's only advantage. No. Can there be a disadvantage? They can be subjective. They can be subjective. You can't reach the person all the time, right? And how much is a textbook? What's the cost? <laughs> the price of a textbook? What's that? So it could be expensive also, right? So textbook, it's a good source of domain knowledge. It includes theories, methods, techniques. But it might reflect a specific author's view, so you should be aware of that. It might also use two ideal, idealized models, which are not maybe uh, realizable in practice. Existing applications can be directly used to determine user feasible features, and you can reuse existing artifacts, requirements, architecture, source, Analyzing many systems might be high. But domain experts can provide contextual information which is not in the textbook. Okay, not everything is written in the textbook. So to define a, a very good architecture, you might need the experience of the domain expert. Can be consulted during domain analysis and validated afterwards. That is, during domain analysis it can help uh, the domain expert can help to derive the concepts and afterwards if you have the designed the architecture it can also validate okay. can say hey what about this concept it's missing in your architecture experts have different areas of expertise several experts might be needed and this might be very costly right but if you have expert in your own organization, of course, it's one of the uh, valuable knowledge sources. So we evaluate the. Uh, we have these are the uh, text, uh, the knowledge sources, and it, it appears so there are many domains. Usually, we don't have that much problem to identify the domains, but there are, it appears that for any domain, there are many, many knowledge sources. There are not so many domain experts, but, for example, there are lots of domain literature. So, which one should you select? Okay. For that, actually, we use uh, two criteria. The first one is objectivity. So you take a knowledge source, you evaluate the knowledge source. So you should set, so uh, you should decide whether you should analyze the knowledge source or not. So for that, first you look at objectivity. You, you check has it been proven expert. Uh, the knowledge source is it reliable? Is it objective? Is it outdated? If it's outdated, 
it's not a, a reliable uh, knowledge source. Is it stable? Is it widely acknowledged by experts in that domain? So, it's, so you, you look at the quality of the knowledge source independent from your requirements. So it, it could be a knowledge source which is of high quality, which includes proven concepts. Of course, this is not the only one. The first thing actually we should look at is, is relevance. Okay. So we have a knowledge source. Is it relevant for my purpose? So you evaluate from your problem perspective. What's the problem perspective? Basically, the, the stakeholder concerns. Is the knowledge source relevant for solving our problem? Is it too specific or too detailed for solving the problem? Is it too general? So you get a bunch of knowledge sources, what you can identify. So you have to scope these. So first, so we are now in the process of domain characterization. Domain characterization means identify domains, we have defined the domains, and also define the knowledge source. There are many, many knowledge sources, so we, we actually only select, select from these knowledge sources by looking at relevance, is it relevant for my problem, and is the knowledge source itself of high quality. Using these two, Criteria, we define the, uh, the, the metric of abstraction quality. Abstraction quality of a knowledge source is a function of objectivity and relevance. So if a knowledge source is, of, is highly relevant for you, and it, is very, it includes stable concepts, proven concepts, then it has a high abstraction quality. If one of these functions is low, if the relevance is low, and it's low abstraction quality. So let's do a, a short exercise here then. Evaluate following knowledge sources for producing monitoring systems. Domain expert with 15 years experience in developing monitoring systems or uh, control systems. Objectivity is high, low or medium. High, medium, low. Medium. He's a domain expert. He, 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 he sleeps with the domain concepts. And so he wakes up with domain concepts. He has proven that. And so <laughs> he is the expert, or he or she is the expert in the domain. So why do you say medium? But. The domain expert usually knows what he or she is doing, right? Insurance system domain expert, 20 years. So nobody is perfect. That's that's true. Nobody is perfect. My name is nobody. <laughs> but, uh, but that's true. But of course, there's no perfect knowledge. But usually, we we would. It, we can rely on these domain expertise. I would just say it's high, highly objective. Master thesis on feedback control systems. Maybe but oh, we forget about this. The domain expert, is it relevant? Yes. Very relevant, of course. So then if you would have both high, high, then this would be high, right? Uh, master T is on feedback control systems. It's relevant. Relevant. Low, medium, high. You can have any scale, actually. One, two, five, or... Feedback control systems. Driver monitoring. You have sensors in the car. It, it senses you, it observes. Feedback control. Is it relevant? Medium? Medium to high. Objectivity? Master thesis. 
Very high? Okay. So then you would take the master thesis to build the architecture. No, it is not relevant. It is relevant, you say, but is it objective? Is it scientific? Depends, of course, on the supervisor, the student, the thesis. But in general, usually, unless it's a very good master thesis, So you would say low, medium, high, what? Okay. It can be high or medium, but high. Okay. You should trust. But then you say it's it's less relevant. You see, so this is the uh, the way how we how we should evaluate PhD thesis on physiological characteristics of the eye. Maybe from biology department. They studied the eye and then they have a nice PhD thesis. They did work for four, five, six years and uh, some journal papers. Is it objective? Of, of, of course, it's high, right? We expect from PhD thesis. Is it relevant? Relevant? So, so you are the. Uh, Mm -hmm. Relevant means that you will also, you might need to use it, so depends on what's in, in the thesis, but it could be too specific for you, right? It's very, it's just, just focusing on, uh, on eyes, but your system is quite, is broader, and you are not interested in, in the complete behavior, okay? 20 years old textbook on control systems. Well, it's relevant. Is it relevant? Yes. It's yes, right? Is it objective? No. no. It's, it's old. It might be old. So it's better to look at up-to-date knowledge source. Flight cabin monitoring system. Objective, relevant. Is it relevant? This one is more difficult, right? <laughs> it's a monitoring system for flight cabin in, 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 in uh, planes. Relevant or not? Low. Low. Why? Uh, it's not the thing that we want, actually. We don't want. Mm -hmm. But it's a monitoring system. But different kind. Different kind. So you would, okay, say it's low. So I think it depends on requirements. Well, everything depends on requirements. <laughs> Objective? Depends on the so system, so I guess so. It, if, it's, if, it's, if it's built by a very large company, a known company, I will not mention names. Normally I would too, but <laughs> then it's, it's, it could be objective, right? Or if it's, if it's just the uh, system which is defined by a senior design project, we, we also trust these projects, but then <laughs> it could be, <laughs> could be lower. So, manager of company who builds control systems. Of course, manager will say, I'm very objective and very relevant, but <laughs> so relevant? Relevant? For, so you are going to be a manager, plan to be a manager. Why relevant? We are going to design the system. We are defining the domains, the knowledge sources. But we should uh, meet his expectations. Okay. What are the expectations of manager? We are almost done. So. <laughs> For example, he wants maybe he he 
constraint with that with budget or time schedule or something like that. Yes, but here relevance means uh, it's the manager of help. Can the manager of help to define the solution domain concepts? So can the manager help to define, to help me to to say what the con uh, driver monitoring system is? Okay, how the feedback should be? See, then it's, it's low actually, right? Is objective? Yeah, that's okay. Textbook, last one. Textbook on designing real-time systems. Very quickly. Relevant or not? Low. No. It's about real-time real systems. So the system should directly interact. And textbook depends on author. Is it up to date? Then you can say it's medium or high. So I guess it's understood now. So you have to evaluate these knowledge sources. So we will now take a break and then continue. <laughs>